All right, I'm going to get started. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm with, oh, you can't hear me? Hmm. Can you? But you can hear me, right? And you can hear me, and you can. Now you can? OK, I'll do my best. Um, my name is Chris, and I'm with a company called Vapor Apparel. And we've been around for 11 years, uh, focused completely on sublimation, as well as sports apparel and sportswear. So wicking garments and function hemp, as they're called here in, in Germany. And I'm going to talk about building a uh, on-demand, print-on-demand e-commerce model, which we started about 18 months ago. So we're going to do over $1.5 million on just Amazon this year. And it's all print-on-demand. Uh, and it's all leveraging the current products and people that we already have in our organization. So there's a way to, to build an online marketplace or revenue stream without necessarily adding a whole bunch of new costs to your business. Um, I'm a regular sublimator. I have shirts in stock, I have printers and presses and not lots of normal corporate customers, which means I have to have an art department. So we've got four or five people in our art department and Every once in a while, they didn't have anything to do. So I said, okay, well, let's create some new markets. And Amazon came to us and said, we like your product. We would like to have it on, on our marketplace. And so we started with them and we've added to a couple of others. Of course, we have our standard Magento-based uh, website for our three retail brands as well. What I'd like to do is just kind of talk about what we've learned. We, we did not know what we were doing when we started this. Yesterday was the first day I sold over 250 shirts in one day, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it was $5,000 US revenue with approximately $2,800 worth of profit. So that's not too bad. Um, we have a 4.9 star rating on Amazon. And I think what we've done is we've been able to figure out the parts that are necessary to truly have a very highly regarded online channel. So, let me start. Oh wow, I didn't know this was so detailed. Okay. So what do you need? The first thing you need is an end-to-end an -end techno uh, end -end technology. You have to have your data centralized. You need different APIs to communicate with different customers. Um, you can do this in a manual way. You can communicate with email for, with Amazon, but if you develop an API system that works with your print operations, you can save a lot of time and money and frustration. Um, you need a really good front end, so obviously there are marketplaces that do that very well. We also do this with phone apps. Has anybody heard of Snapshirt or, uh, or um, let me think, who else? YoShirt, these are these California guys making phone apps that take your picture and then they send it to me. So we have an API for some of those people as well. And when I reference the 1.5 million, I'm only speaking about Amazon. Our, our corporate customers are, some, some of them are a million dollars on their own. Um, it's gotta be easy to use. Uh, if you haven't seen Snapshirt, go ahead and download it. It's the funnest, easiest little app to start making clothing on your, on your, uh, on your handheld. And you better do a really good job with search engine registration and keywords. Um, we actually started using a subscription service about two weeks ago that helped us analyze our keywords that we were using on Amazon and we've made some adjustments and we've watched our adoption rate or our session percentage go from approximately 7% to 11% of the people who are looking at our products when we have the buy box. If anybody's doing Amazon Commerce, the buy box is when you see a product and you click on it and you're the vendor who is currently in front of the customer. Sometimes you'll see also available from four or five other customers. So having the buy box is a very important element and we've also learned that keywords definitely impact that. So you have to know the content that you're focused on. If you're gonna do content for sailing, then you need to know what a J22 sailboat is or, is, or somebody needs to know in, t in your organization. So it's helpful to understand the content uh, of each market that you're trying to sell to. It helps to have some printers, obviously, right? Um, we are exclusively sublimation online. I don't have anything against direct to garment. I have several really well-functioning, profitable parts of my business on D to G. But we focus on wicking 
and sun protection specifically with our blank garments. Uh, you know, in the southern part of the United States, there's a lot of high-end fishing and guys spending $6,000 on gas to go out, out to the day and go fishing for the day. They want to have a nice custom shirt. Uh, so we focus on the attributes of our garment as well as having a reliable print platform. Uh, you got to have a nice full rich gamut. Obviously Sublimation does a great job on that. And another thing that's distinguished us is we don't just make white shirts for Sublimation. We have a nice palette of colors that work very effectively with the Sublimation gamut. And a lot of people are under utilizing lighter colored garments for Sublimation and they're leaving a lot of money on the table. When you walk into a retailer, you don't see a bunch of white shirts. You see colors everywhere. So that's one thing I think that's led to our significant success in just over a year and a half online. Um, obviously, it needs to be short run compliant. Variable data is very helpful. The same things that make your life easy when you're, when you're doing a team with names and numbers on the back is the same. It has the same benefits when you're batching 30 orders in an hour. Um, on Amazon or, or any other marketplace. Obviously, it needs to be reliable. The best form of reliability is, is two of everything, right? So we have four printers. We have, I don't know how many heat presses. And we tend to focus on easy to use printing. 90% of our online sales are spot hit right here. Not all over print, not socks. We love all that stuff. And it, that's what gets the attention but people still buy stuff that's printed right here all the time. <clears throat> and obviously you need scalability. We're fortunate enough that we are focused on mass customization all the time in our business. Our largest customer is the Boy Scouts of America and they have these high adventure camps. So our average order for the Boy Scouts is probably nine shirts. We'll take a licensed graphic with their hometown and their uh, troop number and customize it for them. We'll even make one shirt for a scout. Let's say somebody moves into town. Who wants to be the one kid at camp that doesn't have the shirt that everybody else has? We don't need therapy for that. We just send the, send the shirt real quick. So we're very one-off ready. And if you have a one-off mindset, you can do fantastic online, in our opinion. It's helpful to have a lot of dynamic blank inventory. Um, does anybody know, I, I, first of all, I, I prefer the World Cup over, this, over the Super Bowl, but last year we had a little bit of a controversy with the Patriots and allegedly the quarterback deflated the ball so that his guys could catch it a little easier. So I was sitting at home and I said, huh, I think I'll make a shirt called Deflate Gate. So I took their logo and I changed it just enough and put an air pump next to the ball and we sold 450 shirts in one day. About a month later, the Patriots sent me a letter saying, hey, we'd really like you to take that down. That was fine. But we sold 450 blank shirts in one day with that artwork. So as long as you have a dynamic blank inventory that's ready to, pl ready to be pulled from, it doesn't matter how much you sell of any one, art one piece of artwork. Um, it's nice to have some diversity. I, I was showing some folks here my... Uh, this is in case you get lost on the, uh, on the Bonhof on your way back. But we make a custom fleece scarf. And so I decided to put, you know, Cone's uh, subway system on it. But it's great print registration. Just pass that around if you don't mind. Um, it's, not a, it's not a hanky, but it's very soft. Uh, we also do a lot of other dynamic substrates. We have bulk fabric, hats, bandanas, gaiters for skiing. Uh, socks, all these different things. And they all lend themselves to customization and one-off. So I feel really sorry for people who sell things that are decorated before they get the order. It must be very frustrating uh, to have too much of one thing and not enough of another. If you don't have good people in your manufacturing process, do not try this. You have to have people who have an innate sense of accountability. Um, our production staff, I run two shifts. We have a 30,000 square foot facility with 60 people on each shift. And so Amazon and markets like that, you have to be very quick. People are very mean 
if they don't get things exactly when they want them. So we, for, for the holiday season, which is a huge spike in activity, uh, we had to make sure that our production resources were able to flex to that. And thankfully, usually in November and December, if you're way back in the supply chain, you have some extra time on your hands. Uh, very few people are very busy in the print industry in December unless they're right next to the customer. If you're further back and you sell blanks, like I sell the blank scarves to printers, uh, then December tends to be a, an easy month. Of, you're more worried about making payroll than you are worried about keeping up with business. Well, we solved that problem this year. Uh, we had to hire extra people for December, but sublimation and D to G to an extent as well can really hockey stick very quickly, you know? And if you have a good reliable process with templates and standards for all your operators, then you can be very successful. I, I fully anticipate that we'll be doing over 500 shirts a day decorated on an average day in 2016. Um, so you gotta be short run friendly and, and a flexible technology, um, meaning that it can work with multiple substrates without having to think too much. Um, I was in the US military, so I was taught keep things very simple, don't make anybody think too hard when you've got a process that needs to occur in mass on scale. And typically manufacturing employees are not quite as sophisticated as folks who are working in the home office. So we have a excellent standard of SOPs, standard operating procedures, they're documented. They're on the top of every heat press. You know, keeping things simple for your, for your operators will lower your return rate. The average return rate for apparel on Amazon is 25%. So one out of every four shirts gets returned. That is not the case for us. Our return rate is 6%. 6%, and I truly believe it has very little to do with us. I mean, we're nice guys, you know, but that's not it. It's about the fact that the, the content is so targeted that people feel like the content is speaking right at them. Uh, for example, we have a brand, if you want to go on Amazon tonight and search Altered Latitudes, which is a, na a nautical brand, and let's say you're from Florida and you own a boat. Uh, you don't want a boat that says the nautical chart of Florida, you want your town. So we have nautical charts for Fort Lauderdale, for Sarasota, for Miami, for Miami Beach, for this inlet, for that inlet. And when you speak right at someone, they tend to feel more attached to it and less likely, apparently, to return. Sizing information, posting accurate information, giving people examples. Like we literally tell people, if you're five foot two and you weigh 185 pounds, you're probably a medium in our long sleeve solar garments. So give people examples. As the more content you put on the on the uh, on the page, the more keywords, the more descriptions, the more likely people are to buy. And quality control is important as well. I once worked for a guy where the head of quality control had to report to the head of manufacturing. Not, not, not really a good idea. That's like the fox being in charge of the hen house. So you have to have people in QC land and quality control that consider their job the only job that they have so that they look at each shirt independently and they make an independent decision. We've had maybe two print errors get to end customers. Now the way you react to those end customers when there's a problem is, is, is another important aspect of success. Um, but, with, but regardless, you, you need to have somebody who doesn't report in to the guys doing the printing. Uh, that just doesn't make sense. It needs to be auditable. One of our newest growth areas is we do printing for brands so fishing brands in particular, and they don't have the power, the resources, or the time to go online themselves. So we've made a deal with them. There's one called um, Salty Scales, which has fish scales designs all over the shirt. We pay him $7 for every shirt he sells on Amazon, and we manage everything for him. So we already have his artwork. We ask him, to, we send him a spreadsheet with all the keywords and everything else that we need for his uh, postings. We, have, we, we require the artwork from him, 
and then we post it and we handle all the production. And that has been a wonderful thing for everybody. When he gets $7, he sold 20, 23 or 24 shirts last week. So I took the $7 times 23, 23 items and I deducted it off of his invoice. So this is a great way to help your customers keep paying on time. Post them on Amazon and other marketplaces and just give them a credit on their, on their decorating account. And all of a sudden I've got six or seven brands who heard from me, not hearing from me, but hearing from our other customers. Hey, have you talked to Chris about him putting you on Amazon yet? So they'll start to tell other people about it. And that is a market that's growing very rapidly in the States. I was at a trade show uh, called Magic which is a fashion show in Las Vegas twice a year. And I saw a, a company that that's all they did. They said, bring us your brand. If it's compliant with our production model, we'll do all your Amazon work and we'll just cut you a check every month or every two weeks. So that's growing very rapidly. Um, you need to have a retail attitude. I mean, I collect, um, I collect like crystals and rocks. I, I like to go rock hunting and find specimens. Um, so I've bought one or two that I probably won't, they don't exist on my continent, I probably won't be able to find them myself. And the quality of the packaging was a riot. So I bought one from a company in Poland, and it was very nice. They had a bilingual letter, English and Polish, telling us about where the rocks were found, who is making money from them, how we're empowering the small community, and, and, their, and, and that it's an economic engine. I was like, this is great. It was well packaged, it had bubble wrap on it, nothing was broken. And then, the, then I got one from, from uh, somewhere in Asia. And it was pathetic. It was wrapped in a potentially used piece of, uh, of uh, you know, paper for cleaning up a spill in the kitchen. Uh, there was no notification, no writing of anything, not even a thank you. And. I was like, wow, that's just, you had such a great chance to turn me into a repeat customer and you did nothing about it. You know, the easiest cut person to make, to help buy something from you is somebody who's already bought something from you. It's, it's much easier. Uh, so with our model, we hang tag every garment. We fold it nicely. We have a picture of our entire team. And I, you know, I talk about the fact that there's 50 hardworking Americans making this. And I had every one of my employees sign the bottom of this. And it goes out with every single shipment that we do. And every week I can go online and there'll be one or two comments like, what a great company. They only, they don't have illegal aliens. They're, they're paying people a good wage. They all sign the card. Now, of course it's a photocopy, but and they know that. And we're not trying to pretend it's not. but. I know for a fact we've made a human connection because in the States, most of our apparel is not made in the United States anymore. So when they find somebody who's breaking that rule, it makes them feel good about their purchase. Um, and again, it needs to be flexible. If you're going to do the printing for all the other brands, you need to have all their hang tags. You need to have the UPC stickers, whatever else they need, uh, you need to be able to pull off. If you don't have any artwork, it's going to be really difficult. If you don't have good art, a good art team um, that is used to thinking in a retail way, it's going to be hard. So I like art that can live multiple lives. So that little scarf I made is also on a pair of socks. It's also on a shirt taking the same artwork and leveraging it across multiple substrates is, is an obvious thing to do, okay? But when you start creating artwork, don't, don't, don't make artwork that's, that takes too long. Like, have you ever seen the classic French and Swiss uh, posters from the 30s, like Ski Zermatt and, and just these beautiful big posters? So I had this idea, I was like, wow, we, we should make some artwork like that because it's ski season. And my art director came and said, you know, that's a lot of work. Can't we do something else that's less, less painful? And so what we did is we found all the ski resorts had their maps of all their routes down the mountains. And most of them considered them public access. So we called all these resorts, contacted, got, got approval for using their, their mountains. 
and said, okay, well, let's do this instead. And it was very effective. Now we took that idea and we added it to, now we're going into boating and sailing season in the States. So it, does anybody know that there's a nautical alphabet, right? So A looks like this and, and a hurricane has a, has a, a red block with a, a black square in the middle. So we took all of our not, no nautical charts that we did and instead of doing the charts, we just did the first initials of the main parts of the city. So uh, Miami Beach, Florida, MBF, and then very elegantly Miami Beach, Florida, and then the longitude and latitude. So think about how much easier that was for my art department. They, they crafted the entire alphabet and then they just grabbed it and started, they were able to make 50 to 60 designs in the same amount of time it would have taken me to do the one skis or mott sign or, or the Matterhorn or whatever else I was coming up with while I was riding my bike. Um, so that's a very important and powerful idea. Take a concept and run it across multiple geographic verticals or, or multiple activity verticals. Um, lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in the United States right now. So I said, okay, Nebraska lacrosse, Maryland lacrosse, Baltimore lacrosse. I go into Google, what are the top 50 lacrosse cities in the United States? And I made one for each one of them. No, no licensing, nobody owns the rights to Nebraska lacrosse. It's a state and it's a sport. So we did all 50 states, not just one or two. And that's, that's a very powerful thing. It makes your art department feel like, hey, he's thinking about our time. You know, it's gonna make them feel better about the process. Um, I love going vertical. Lacrosse is a vertical. Sailing is a vertical. The best thing for verticals are verticals that have disposable income. Most boaters have money. They also, their, their favorite and least favorite days of their lives are when they buy the boat and when they sell the boat. In between, there's a massive amount of money that gets, sold, uh, gets spent on this, on this boat. Uh, you should brand your information, create a brand. If you don't have a brand, make one up. Register it, pay the small amount of money to get it registered effectively so you can defend it. We make mass customized running gear under a brand called Split Time on Amazon. And so what we did there is, is we, created our own brand, split time. Who cares about split times? Race uh, cyclists, runners, and swimmers, and triathletes. What's my split time? That's what they care about. So when somebody hears split time, they're thinking, oh, well, this is a running brand. This is, this is for me. And there's nothing, Amazon will let you submit brands as long as you have a hang tag and a, and a, a registered trademark, you can have it approved within 48 hours. And so don't do one brand that doesn't define itself everywhere. Make little brands that are very focused on each specific marketplace. Um, and you should be popular, you know, don't, don't do things that nobody cares about. Um, I, I wanted to do artwork of the US presidents and everybody's like, nobody's gonna buy this stuff. And so we put it up there and nobody bought it. Um, I just like history, I went to university for it. So then I said, okay, I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Take Abraham Lincoln and put a snorkel mask on top of it and just put Abraham snorkeling. And we started selling it. A Bunch of snorkeling enthusiasts thought it was great that there was a picture of Abraham Lincoln, you know, the man who took care of the Civil War in, in my country, and he's got a snorkel mask on. So my first example, it's like, so what? It's a president on a t-shirt, who cares? But the minute I did something from the 19th century, the 20th century, and I put it on top of them, then it started to resonate with people. Um, so quality artwork, thoughtful, think about things that are growing and that are in pop culture when you're picking your artwork. You don't want to waste your art, art team. It's time. Um, these are just some things I jotted down at the end of the day. I was thinking, you know, what, what, how, how do we get our 4.9 ranking on Amazon? I think we, we let every cu com customer know that we're a real company with real people. And, you know, people don't buy things. They buy from other people. They buy into relationships. They can buy a shirt from anybody on Amazon. They selected us because we told them a story. Um, 
by the way, 45% of our customers reorder from us within 60 days. 45%. So that, some of that's the quality of the product, but a lot of it is you know, things like our handwritten note that lets people know, hey, these are the people who made this shirt. Um, you need to follow up on every question or comment from a customer as if it was your largest customer. You know, one person sitting behind their computer can really ruin your brand on Amazon if you don't treat everybody with respect. Anybody that says, hey, I, I don't like the shirt. I had a guy, it was nine months later, and he wanted to return the shirt. And I was like, you know, this guy, okay. So I let him return it, and I probably stopped some nasty comment from happening. You know, we're selling our shirts on average for $35. We're generating an average of $21 of margin. Sorry, $21 of margin, thank you. Uh, it's okay to give a couple of shirts away. Um, when we had a missizing, we said, keep the shirt, we'll send you the correct sizing. When you tell people to keep the thing that you messed up on, instead of making them return it back, it just strengthens your brand. It just strengthens the relationship. They're more likely to tell somebody else about your brand. Um, let's see, what else? I, I, I love my mom, so you know, treat them like you're, they're your mom. That, 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 that's, that's a good rule of thumb in business. Um, and ask for positive feedback, but don't be too pushy about it. Ask nicely as you educate the people on why you're deserving of, of, of response, of a, of a good positive feedback. And whatever you do, get the, get the product out the next day. You know, Amazon gives you a, a zone of time that they estimate things are to arrive. And we're always one of the first or second days of that time frame. So if you go on tonight and type in Vapor Apparel on Amazon and you read our comments, 80% of our comments are super fast great vendor, will buy again, real fast, great quality, well packaged, things like that. So we're still very much a work in progress on this. I think everybody who has printing resources in blank inventory and a customer base can do this. You know, I didn't go to Harvard, I didn't go to Oxford. We're doing 260% of last year's volume right now. In our first year, we did $485,000 worth of sales. And we're on schedule for right around 1.2 to 1.5 this year. And every week, it's just another 50 graphics. It's a slow, steady drip that makes success on e-commerce with mass customization. So I'm at 30, well, I'm at 27 minutes. I hope this was valuable to you. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody and thanks. I was worried there wasn't gonna be anybody here, but we got a full house, thanks.